<clears throat> okay, so <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm actually really excited because I have a really good friend, um, Sindhu Thomas George, today. And uh, Sindhu is actually the one that gave me the idea of doing this, uh, this video series for, um, to interview different business leaders in Chicago. And uh, I'm extremely grateful for her for that idea, along with some of the other things that she's helped me with. She's actually the founder of Shakti Diversity and Equity Training. Um, she's been in the diversity space for about 15 years, and uh, she's also a tenure professor at College of Lake County. Uh, Sindhu, thank you so much for uh, doing this. Thanks for having me, Benny. Yeah, I, um, so this is a little different than all the other, um, all the other videos that I've recorded, because yeah. your topic is one that's, um, it could be somewhat controversial, it could be, um, there's a lot of gray in it, and there's a lot of unknown in it, yeah. uh, which is diversity and inclusion. Um, so I'm just going to flat out ask you, like, what, what are some of the mistakes that companies right now are making when it comes to diversity and inclusion? Okay, that's a great question. Um, there's no way I can talk about that in 10 minutes. So I'm just going to give you a, a couple of things that I think. Um, I think first and foremost, uh, diversity initiatives have to be leadership driven, right? So um, this should not just be embraced by, you know, the C-suite and other leaders. It should be coming from um, the leadership. So I think that's really important. I also think that... Um, diversity initiatives have to be part of the DNA of an organization. And so make it part of your strategic plan or at least make it an institutional priority if you wanna ensure that your initiatives are gonna succeed. Um, another thing I think that a lot of organizations uh, struggle with is that they focus so much on diversity, but they don't focus on inclusion. And so a lot of us are obsessed with numbers, you know, what's the percentage of females that exist and what's the percentage of people of color, uh, but you can have a diverse organization without having an inclusive one. And so it's really important to think, well, where are those employees sitting at an organization? More than likely, they're not gonna be at the top levels. And that's really what the goal is. And so when we get to a place of inclusion, we're gonna see women and people of color um, that are sitting at the positions of power. Um, another mistake is when organizations don't center racial diversity in DEI work. So, uh, you know, we're, you and I are both people of color and we're going to be about 40% of the population and, and we're gonna continue to increase, right? So uh, eventually people of color are gonna be the majority in this country. And so not talking about race and centering issues on race and racial identity and racial equality is just a big mistake because so many of our employees are people of color. Um, and when we don't center race, it's because we are uncomfortable with it, right? We have a history of racism in this country and we live in a racially stratified society. And so people kind of sidestep and brush them under the carpet and they focus more on uh, gender and things like diversity of thought. And what that leads to is continuing to see men and women of color being left behind. And this is very true in corporate America from the managerial positions to the C-level to the boardroom. And um, you know, historically diversity initiatives have always benefited white women. Um, and that's still pretty much, that's still very true today. So if we want to see DEI really be to the benefit of everyone, uh, we need to include that conversation of race. And then lastly, I would say um, companies focus a lot on recruitment, but not on retention. So um, it's a lot of effort and energy to get talented employees in your, in your organization. And, but if we're not working to retain them, then they're gonna leave, right? So they don't feel a sense of belonging. And so I would say it's really important to spend the time, the effort and the dollars on recruiting and inclusion is a recruitment strategy in its own. So that's a little bit of what I have to say in terms of some advice that I have to help ensure that your uh, diversity initiatives are successful. That's a lot that you said in a really, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, but that was great. Um, so, how can companies ensure that they're actually getting the most out of their diversity trainings? Because I think a lot of companies are doing it right now, at least that I know of. Yeah. I don't know that, I don't know if they're getting the most out of it though. So how yeah. can they, um, yeah, how can they? That's a great question as well. Um, in diversity training, it's an investment as well. So you wanna make sure that you are getting what you put in. And so one, I would say, make sure that whoever you, you hire uh, or, or that your organization goes through the foundations of DEI. So diversity and inclusion is this umbrella, right? There's so many different topics and you don't wanna jump to the more complex topics before you do the foundational work. Um, so it's kind of like when you were in college and you were taking math, you took like the math 101 before you can get to math 300. And it's the same idea. So it's really important to set that foundation. Um, and then I would also say, make sure you hire somebody that is uh, competent and credible and experienced. And diversity and inclusion has exploded this field in the last, I would say, five years. And so there are a lot of people um, that are now diversity trainers, which is a great thing, but um, not everybody has the same experience. Some people have a certificate program that they went through 
Um, some people might have had just personal experiences or trying to break into it. And so it's really important to interview um, the person that you're bringing on to see what are their competencies. Everyone has different specialties. And so what are you looking for? And is that a good fit? Um, and, you know, I would say that in the, in the, in today's age of social media, it makes it really hard to identify who's competent and who's not because somebody who might have no experience has, you know, some thousand followers and a really good footprint on the internet, they might not be uh, prepared to do your training. And so um, I, right now I'm, I spend about five hours with a, a Chicago tech company in the last like three weeks um, of them just grilling me and interviewing me um, because likely we're going to be working together. And, you know, it is a lot of work, but I understand that when companies are going to invest, they want to make sure they're making the right decision. So I would say don't hesitate to really get to know your trainer before you bring them in. And then uh, last two things is um, you should always make sure that your leadership is being trained. Um, it's really important to equip organizational leaders with, in, you know, knowledge around inclusion and equity and anti-racism and intercultural competency. Um, and if we don't train the leaders, uh, they're not going to be the role models that we want them to be for the employees. And it also is almost like a double standard. We're expecting our employees to get trained, but the leadership isn't trained and everyone can benefit from this knowledge. And then finally, doing a one and done kind of workshop and expecting that it's going to change your company culture is a big mistake. Um, if you only have a budget to do one, that's fine, but keep that conversation going. Um, a lot of times we'll go into a training and it's great and everyone's energized and then you walk away and you forget about it. Um, but a good trainer will give you enough material to talk about that for the next few meetings. Um, and if you're really looking to shift your culture, then invest in a series of trainings that really work to um, equip your employees with both knowledge um, and awareness building and also skill building um, so that they can have both knowledge and skills and really work together to help ensure that your organization is um, inclusive and equitable and welcoming for all people. And so that's some of the thoughts that I had. It's a, yeah, but it is, um, it's actually really hard um, because I think just like you're trying to hire a manager for your company, right? You have to interview and just because someone has years of training doesn't mean they're going to be the best fit for your company. So I 100% agree with you. I think, uh, I think that's really important. Um, yeah. Is there any companies, and I, I don't want you to, this is to give props, are there any companies that you know of that um, where leadership has done a really great job? And if so, like, what what is it that they've done differently? And you don't have to say names, obviously, if you don't want to. Yeah, I'm going to refrain from that because I don't have, uh, you know, the ability to always say who I work with. But yeah, I, I do. I think there are a lot in Chicago. Um, and I primarily was working with like government and higher ed and mental health. And now I've kind of shifted into the Chicago scene. And there's a lot of organizations that are really uh, forward thinking. I'm, I'm going to be working with an organization in the tech space and they're, they're doing their whole entire organization and not just one or two trainings, but three, three hour trainings. And they're really looking to invest. Um, and they're really sincere about doing this for their employees and for the organizational culture versus for financial profit. I'm sure that's an impetus and a reason, um, but I always enjoy working with organizations when they're serious about inclusion and they care about their people and they care about their employees experience in the organization because that's, that's what it's all about. We spend all our time at work, right? And so we want to feel a sense of belonging and I'm really passionate about helping organizations get there. No, that makes sense. Um, I, I can say, um, in downtown Chicago, there's definitely some companies where leadership genuinely tries to uh, make sure that's that's DNI is like uh, the blueprint of their company. So, um, but then there's also a lot that really really struggle with it. Yeah, and again, there's yeah. A lot, there's a lot of perspectives, right? Yeah. And I'll just say that, like you know, being in higher education, I think that we're like light years ahead of corporate America and tech companies and the conversations that I'm seeing happening now you know, in the business world, we're happening 10 years ago in my higher education world. And so we will, you know, the business world will catch up. It just takes time. And, you know, intercultural competency, diversity, anti-racism, these are all things that are developed over time, right? Um, nobody, you can't do like a one week training and then all of a sudden you're woke and, you know, you're a diverse leader. Um, it's something that <laughs> even I'm learning, you know, I make blunders and mistakes and it's, it takes reading and it takes developing just like anything. So, um, I think that organizations will get there as long as they're committed to it. Yeah, and it's it's we all have to work together to get things done, right? No one has all the solutions. So, um, cool. I'm really glad you. Uh, I'm really glad you uh, decided to do this. So, thanks for making the time to do so. Uh, sure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks no problem. So, so um, yeah, I mean, I think if uh, I'll, I'm going to put your contact info um, yeah. 
in the bottom of the YouTube thing and also on LinkedIn. So if anybody has any questions, they could reach out to you because sure, I'd be happy to help and, and <laughs> whatever. All right, Benny, take care. All right, you too. Bye. Bye.